Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at a DIY digital audio player, or also known as a DAP. Uh, this is Project 2473, and so lately I've been struggling with finding a suitable digital player for music playback, and I thought I would share my experiences uh, with where I'm at so far, and uh, with developing an, a replacement for the digital audio player that I've been using for the past seven years. And so I've been using the Chord Mojo and Chord Poly. And so I listen primarily to digital files stored locally on the internal SD card. And so you can see, if you're not familiar with the Mojo and the Poly, the Mojo is simply a DAC. It's also a USB DAC. The Poly is a pl digital player and it attaches to the Poly and it allows you to stream music from your local Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or it has a micro SD card slot to store files locally and then play them directly off the internal uh, off the SD card okay and so that's been my main music source for the past seven years and specifically when playing the poly in airplane mode uh, so that you disable any Wi-Fi and so I found a subjective uh, difference when playing in airplane mode and so that's been kind of my reference I found that there was quite a jump in sound quality and so the issues with the poly has been uh, I bought it when it first came out and it has been plagued with software glitches and so I, I stuck by it just simply because of the sound quality but over time um, it just continued to provide a lot of trouble reliability issues with the battery and, and things like that. I should mention also that it's portable, uh, but I didn't really use it, uh, you know, outside of my system at home. And so uh, it just seemed at the time like a good entry level uh, music playback system, DAC streamer. And so it, was, it wasn't cheap at the time. I believe it was around 1700 Canadian dollars for this combo. And so today what I want to do is look at some alternatives and try to figure out what can be done in terms of DIY to try to uh, get at least as good sound quality uh, and then improve on the reliability aspect with the with this DIY solution. Okay, and so so far I've been I was looking at a new streamer solution. Um, I looked at the Eversolo DMP A8 which is which has been recently released and so um, there's been half a dozen or so rave reviews on YouTube regarding this unit um, but I became concerned when slightly used units started showing up on the used market and so I wasn't about to plunk down $2,800 Canadian plus 13% uh, sales tax on something just you know on a hunch so also there's the uh, very popular Weem Pro Music Streamer, which is a really well-designed, robust, reliable unit. I've been using that as well. Um, and so the only issue that I've had with the Weem is that it doesn't have the local playback feature, which allows you to have local storage. It does allow you to have network storage attached through the network cable and so you can uh, stream music from your your local area network or also uh, through DLN, DNLA and so I found that over uh, I found that there is a degradation in sound quality when playing music over the uh, network and so I was really trying to focus on a solution that allowed for playback from local storage and so uh, the Raspberry Pi is also a popular option in many D for many DIY enthusiasts um, because it has, uh, you know, it's very versatile and it has the internal micro SD card slot along with a host of other features. And so during COVID, I was researching a solution based on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, however, at the time, uh, every vendor was sold out. And so fast forward till now and there's a new Raspberry, Fi Raspberry Pi 5 available. And so my idea is quite simple uh, to use the Raspberry Pi and playback music files from the micro SD card slot. Okay, and so now to take it a step further, I was curious as to whether you could run the Raspberry Pi in airplane mode, disabling the Wi-Fi, similar to what I was doing with the Chord Mojo Poly. Um, but there's no 
technically there's no airplane mode with the Pi, but the idea is the same, uh, to not rely on noisy uh, Ethernet or Wi-Fi for my music. And so there's a number of playback software uh, options for the Raspberry Pi. There's uh, Volumio, and so Volumio can be controlled. Um, if you're going with the Bluetooth method where you want to control, there I haven't tested this yet, but there's a uh, Bluetooth remote option there. Um, I just put the link there in, in the in the in the blog post there if you want to check it out. So I haven't confirmed whether this works or not. Um, but anyways, um, one of the up easy upgrades for the Raspberry Pi is to upgrade the power supply, and so um, there's a universal filament regulator available from Neurochrome and so you can see it pictured here and so this is a uh, 150 US dollar power supply that delivers low noise and it can be configured for 5 volt output uh, but it does require um, 10 volts AC as the input and so I did purchase this uh, filament regulator as the power supply even though the Raspberry Pi is available with its own you know switch mode power supply but uh, I decided to go with this uh, you know higher quality power supply and then for the 10 volt or for the step down transformer I simply went with a wall uh, wart here from McMaster car it was $23 US there and then uh, just simply spliced the wires and connected it directly into these terminal pins there and so um, so it goes for the step down transformer from your wall uh, and then it goes into the Neurochrome universal filament supply and then from that into the Raspberry Pi okay so um, I assembled the Raspberry Pi and installed the Volumio as an operating system and so I used the Volumio app to control playback. My music library had to be installed on a USB thumb drive uh, since the micro SD card is uh, for the operating system only. So I then sent out, I then sent sound out of the Raspberry Pi via USB to my Chord Mojo DAC. And so sound quality was subpar and had a very digital sonic signature. Uh, the sound was flat and lifeless. So I decided to press on and look for other ways to improve the sound quality of the Raspberry Pi. I researched uh, various top hats, which assembles directly on top of the Pi and serves as an audio interface for better sound quality. And so this would be equivalent to, if you're familiar with some of the older products, uh, like the HiFace Evo, where it takes digital signal from your computer and then turns it into a high quality uh, coaxial digital that you can send out to your to your preferred DAC. And so the idea is similar here. So the top hat, which is commonly known, simply bolts on to the top of the Raspberry Pi and it serves as a interface. And so uh, Ian Canada is a, a manufacturer of various products and so they make products that are upgrades for the Raspberry Pi and so I reached out to them and Ian was able to respond right away and provided a list of components that he suggested as a kind of a starting point to upgrade the Raspberry Pi and so he suggested the transport Pi number 20B and so you can see it here and so this is basically a interface that improves and reclocks the digital signal from the Raspberry Pi. And so in addition to that, you also have the option of re replacing the stock clock. Uh, there's two clock boards here you can see zoomed in here where you can upgrade those clocks to higher precision quartz clocks. And so um, Ian Canada sells uh, clock upgrade options. So I decided to go this route as well. And so just to summarize, um, he suggested the upgraded clock, the 20, 
number 20b transport pi and he also suggested number 47a which is a universal ultra capacitor power supply um, because according to Ian the switch mode power supplies uh, kind of um, interfere with the accuracy of the clocks and so by going with this ultra capacitor power supply you can uh, guarantee good performance from the uh, clock upgrade okay so the parts arrived and I had no trouble assembling the unit and so this is a first for me and so I really kind of had to wrap my head around it and so basically how it is is it stacks like a building and so the power supply is basically the first level and then using standoffs you install each level and so the second level is the Raspberry Pi 5 itself and then the standoffs are included with uh, the products from Ian Canada and then the third floor is the number 20B transport which bolts on using this, uh, this pin header that's uh, a feature of the Raspberry Pi and so everything kind of just passes through this pin header and then you secure it with these standoffs and so it makes a lot of sense once you get it in your hands and you start playing with it so if you're still completely lost and confused like I was um, just it's it's important just more or less just to get it in your hands and try to understand how everything goes together that's maybe my one gripe uh, with Ian Canada's website is it doesn't actually tell you what anything does um, it provides a lot of detail as far as you know the intricacies of the performance and uh, but it really you're kind of just left lost as to what to get how it all goes together um, and so there's no kind of supporting videos or anything like that um, so but with Ian's help and providing kind of a bill of material I ordered it kind of on a, on a leap of faith and then so it all came together and worked so um, so the documentation for the SC pure clock um, so you can see here actually I don't think I showed you a picture of the clock itself so if I go if I have a, a link here um, yeah so here's the clock and so those you have to be careful with matching up the way that the clock gets installed on the circuit board apparently if you get it wrong um, then you could damage the clock but there's instructions included um, with the product that helps you along with that and so um, let me just scroll down here so uh, the documentation for the SC Pure clock claims that the clock requires one week break-in period so initial listening confirmed that the sound was pretty bad uh, so I left the configuration set up playing for about a week and then I returned to listen and so the sound quality definitely improved and it was now sounding very good uh, everything was sounding much more natural and realistic and so uh, another issue that popped up was uh, after having the Chord Mojo DAC for seven years uh, the internal battery was pretty much toast so I removed the battery from the cord mojo and then played and then ran it off the USB power supply. So I was hoping that this would get rid of the pesky mechanical noise from the mojo which sounded like a high pitch whine. This was uh, not noise from the audio signal but rather physical noise coming from the unit itself. So similar to the noise that you would get from a uh, cheap switch mode power supply. So I started looking for a replacement DAC. So I don't really recall what first put me on to ROM DAC chips, but I believe I was looking for something that was musical but not overly warm uh, so as to compromise the overall clarity. So the ROM chip, which is R-O-H-M, is out of Japan and was interesting to me in that it seemed to bridge the gap between the topping DACs and R2R ladder DACs. So I found a used SMSL D300 online and I decided to get a, give it a try. So uh, this DAC took the sound quality uh, up quite a, quite a peg compared to the Chord Mojo. Instruments and vocals seemed more separated and I found that the D300 brought new life into some of uh, poorly recorded albums. So I just did a summary of where I'm at at this point uh, in terms of the components and the cost and so the Raspberry Pi is a hundred US dollars 
Like I mentioned, the Neurochrome Universal Filament Supply is 145, and then the Wall Wart was 24. The Ian Canada number 20A SC Pure Clock and the transport along with the power supply came to a total of 407 US dollars. The SMSL D300 purchased used was 280 US dollars. Um, I did need to buy a 128 gig USB thumb drive for my music library. And then the micro SD card for the Volumio operating system was another $10. So the total cost here was 1,006 US dollars. So I should note as well that the Volumio requires a yearly subscription uh, for that's around 80 US dollars per year. So once it was all set up, um, I was having some glitching issues with the Volumio software, and I was cautioned by Ian Canada that the number 20B transport was not fully tested to work with uh, the latest Raspberry Pi 5. And so I, play, I replaced the 5 with the 4, and then so this resolved the glitching issue. And I should note too that I did not need to do anything software related, simply swapping out the physical Raspberry uh, Pi 5 for the 4, uh, it simply it just simply powered back up and nothing needed to change and it was literally a drop-in replacement requiring no changes other than physically replacing the unit. Okay, and so, um, so uh, this is part one. Part two is going to be actually looking at the objective test data and so whether there is actually a measurable difference in distortion uh, between simply using the Raspberry Pi via the USB out or using the Ian Canada number 20B transport with the upgraded clock and then seeing if there's an improvement um, measuring the electrical signal coming out of the DAC and seeing if there's an improvement there. So, um, but overall, um, the digital playback system has never sounded so good. I'm very happy with the new player. It is now quite quiet, reliable, and easy to use. So take care and have a great day.